in many ways, um, one of the women who, who, through popular history, is is seems to be synonymous synonymous with Kamenamon is their um, is the honorary member and sometime president Countess Markovich. Interestingly, um, she actually wasn't on uh, on the executive at the first meeting, nor does she have uh, very much of a, a role in that initial formation. Although she does. Um, provide uh, the negotiation that allows the Indian Naharan to form an, a, a branch of Kamenamon, the Indian Naharan branch of Kamenamon later in 1914. She also has issue with the idea of Kamenamon as auxiliaries of the Irish volunteers and is one of the, um, one of the speeches she makes in 1914, talks about this again as a regressive step for women, that it would be better for women to go out and buy a revolver and fight for themselves rather than go fundraising to buy revolvers to put into the hands of men. So she's very much a, an activist who, who wants to do this. And of course, her main position during the Rising is with the Irish Citizen Army, not with coming them on. So it's really only after the Rising that uh, Countess Markovich becomes f more fully part of coming them on and is elected its president um, in 1917. Um, and she continues her activism through coming them on. Now, she doesn't stay in it very long. Um, but we have to mark her, I suppose she is such a, a dominant figure in um, the narrative of Irish nationalism and women's history um, and see that uh, Countess Markovich's part in Cumann is fully marked, although it is not as prominent, or I would, I would say as important, I'd say, as, as the work of Jenny Wise Power or Mary McSweeney uh, or indeed any of the Ethna Coyle or any of the other activists uh, but she was its president. So um, the association with Markovich and Kamenamon will always be there. <laughs>